Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do One Piece. Oh, sweet mother of Neptune. Flamingo. Oh, God. One Piece episode 620 review. Yeah. This dude's cool as shit. Someone told me, because right now we're in the manga, and we, of course, the manga is ahead of the anime, duh. Uh, if it wasn't, that'd be a huge problem. But, um, someone's telling me how Flamingo is probably, like, one of the best villains, if not the best villain so far in One Piece. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yo, like, this dude's fucking disgusting, man. Like, I, I don't know if he's the best, but he's just awesome. He's legitimately just awesome. Like, everything he does is just epic and nasty. Like, even his frown face is something so basic. Like, even that's nasty. And when this dude, at the end of the episode, when he puts on his, like, it's not even like a fur coat. It's like a feather coat. He puts on his feather coat. He opens the window. Like, he lets the light come in. And then we have the one girl running around. And then she's like, where's Master? Where's the young man? I can't find the young Master. The old guy's like, fuck. He went out again. Alone. And then you just see him. He's talking on the den to to uh, Buffalo. He's like, "Is everything okay?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, we're being uh, we're being stopped by this iron guard." And he's like, "So the island's still safe?" He's like, "Yeah, island's still safe," which means that the explosion didn't occur. And then you just see him. He's coasting in the air, and it's just nasty. He's just coasting like, no, <laughs> And you're like, dude. And then you, they, they just zoom in real close on his face. He's like, you know, like, beat the guard, I'll be right there. And he just all smiles. He's all smiles. Like, I'm coming personally, bitches. You know what time it is. So, not only do Law and the others have to worry about what's going on outside with Buffalo maybe five, about the island and the tunnel collapsing. And, well, no, the tunnel collapsing because there was an explosion in the D building. And that's where Virgo was, where the where the sad production room was. So that so that area exploded, and we can assume that Virgo was dead because he didn't. I mean, the, the state that he was in, I don't think he could use armored hockey to like defend himself. And plus, when we had uh, uh, Flamingo talking to him on the Denimushi, he was saying his farewells. So we can assume that Virgo's dead. I mean, unless Oda pulls a pal. I will never, as long as I live, I will never live down Pell. Because Pell was just ridiculous. He, this dude took a nuke and he lived in your life. What? Oh, what happened? <sighs> a point blank one at that, too. Well, either way. Uh, so we can assume that Virgo was dead. Also, we know that Monet is dead because we see Caesar Clown stab her heart. So, in fact, the metal pipe that uh, Caesar Clown had did actually pass that weird Q barrier. And then it actually penetrated into her heart. And then we see the blood come out. And she got stabbed in the heart directly. So, and then we actually hear the heartbeat stop. So, it's safe to assume that Monet is dead, too. So... Right now, we just saw two more deaths in One Piece. We can assume this is the case, which is good, in my personal opinion, because if you put characters in situations where they should die, then they should die. And having them survive all the time is kind of annoying, because you're like, okay, so it kind of mitigates the sense of danger, since you know that a lot of these characters are going to survive, regardless of what happens. Either way, we apparently have seen Virgo. Well, we didn't see Virgo, but we saw Monet die. So we can safely assume that two characters are dead. And the way how it play, how it played out, about how Law actually gave uh, Caesar Clown Monet's heart, but Caesar Clown assumed that it was Smoker's heart. That was pretty cool. And he gave Smoker back his own heart as uh, a gesture of gratitude for all things he's done to help them out at this point in time. We also have this one moment where I think it was super overhyped. And listen, I'm not saying that I hate Zoro. I love Zoro. Right? I mean, of course, everyone knows that I signed you over Zoro. That's my. That, that's the way I see things. And I've already made videos explaining that reason. That's why there is. But um, actually, you know what? Uh, why not? A little bit of a plug. And if you haven't seen those videos, click some in the video, and you'll see them. Uh, part one and part two. But um, 
when it comes to the moment that was portrayed in this episode, it was very similar to like the way it was when Zoro and the others were going to Ennius Lobby, when they were going to train. The uh, Puffing Tom, I think it was called, or something like that. Oh, no, no, the Rocket Man. And it was like there was this giant, like, concrete thing in their way, and Zoro was just mad hype, you know. Yeah, and then that was it. But they hyped this shit up to all fucking hell. It was like, dude, it's just a concrete block. Like, there's, there's no need to hype this shit. I mean, if it was, like, pure diamond, okay, okay then. But it was just a concrete block, and Zoro just, you know, simply cuts and calls it a day. End of story. So, but it was very similar to, like, the way we've seen Zoro cut that train when they were going to Ennis Lobby. You know, just, you know, Ross Shulman, yeah, and then all this hype and shit. But, uh, this was unnecessary hype, for sure. And the Shinokuni is coming in. Kinemon, well, Momosuke is somewhat reunited with his father, Kinemon. But he, right now, he's so hungry, he can't even, like, act out loud. And... Well, the last thing I want to mention in the episode, the last thing, because, well, no, two more things. First of all, Baby 5, she did her missile girl, and then she exploded into pieces, and then she reformed. Now, that's something, that that's very Logia-esque when you think about it. How is she able to blow herself up into pieces and then reform? That's very Logia. But when you take a look at her powers, they're very Paramecia. So, maybe the metamorphosis fruit that she has, maybe it's actually a Logia, and she can transform into anything, but she chooses to turn into weapons. Who knows? Because she was able to blow herself up into pieces and reform. And that's something that we've never, ever, ever seen. Um, from a Paramecia, at least. Um, only the Logias can do that, like Aokiji, Enel. Kizaru, you know, those guys. So, even guys like Harry Ball can do that kind of shit. But, uh, Paramecia is like, the hell? So, there has to be a little more insight on her, uh, on her powers. The, uh, metamorphosis uh, individual. And they're still taking on Frankie Shogun, because the Iron Pirate doesn't die, apparently, man. The Iron Pirate takes blows. And he just like, you know, I got a Frankie Shogun, General Dejo, he's still there. And the last part I want to get to. Okay, fine. <sighs> the episode did have a pretty obvious negative, in my personal opinion. And that was the fact that, like, the first eight minutes were just straight-up rehashes. It, were, it was rehash moments of literally moaning, the button, the breathing, <sighs> the spotlight, then the fantasizing the explosion, and then the explosion not occurring. Because at that point in time, Caesar Clown, yeah. And for some reason, Monet just couldn't shift all their weight over to the button, but instead, kind of went like, it's, 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 instead of going like this, she went like this, and you're like, but whatever, she, she got stabbed in the heart, so we can, I guess, give her a pass. But still, like, it was just like, the first eight minutes were literally rehashes of what we saw in last week's episode of One Piece. Yeah. So, uh, no, 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 I, I don't like rehashes. I've seen Dragon Ball Z, where they rehash the same fight scenes over and over and over, and you're like, it's the same shit. So, this time over, I'm um, not, no. they could have, I mean, I understand that they want to progress the, uh, they want to pace the episode as to where in which they would end off on Flamingo coming out there with that smile on his face, like, eh, and then they did extend a lot of scenes just so they would get to that part. Like the Zoro extension scene and a few other scenes that I kind of don't want to really go over exactly. But the pacing was okay, but the animation was just rehashes of shit. So, no, well, no, no, correction. Backpedal. The animation was okay. But the pacing was rehashed because they were doing stuff that that they didn't in last week's episode for the first like eight minutes of this episode. After all, after the opening and the you know stuff after the opening, so that to me I thought was a big problem. The animation was okay. The pacing was a lot of rehashed stuff, and then after that they got to the real stuff. 
And when it came to story progression, really, we're not anywhere, with the exception of the fact that, you know, Virgo is probably dead. Monet is dead. Flamingo's coming. Fl Flamingo's coming. So, so that's good. But the fight's still going on between Buffalo Baby 5. And they're still in the tunnel. They can see... Usopp can see the exit now. And they're being chased by Shinokuni once again. For like the 15th time in this arc. So... I mean, overall, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, okay is okay. <laughs> okay is, like, literally okay. So, I'm done. King Lightning, be sure to, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe. As always, peace. Have a nice day.